Hey guys, welcome to my channel. So today we'll be doing carbon and its compounds. This is a grade 10 portion and this is one of the first and the main chapters or this is a chapter wherein you get to know about organic compounds and stuff. It's a very big unit which you'll be continuing to grade 12. So better know it now itself like properly all about the nomenclature and stuff. So let's get started with the topics, yeah. Your first topic is bonding in carbon, which is written the covalent bond. Now, what is covalent bond? We learned about ionic compound last uh, chapter, right? Wherein ions react with each other. Uh, metals and non-metals, respectively, metals used to release electrons, wherein non-metals used to take on electrons in order to fill their valence uh, shell. Here, it is opposite. Here, what happens is carbon is having an atomic number of 14, right? So carbon has an atomic number 14. Now, if you write the electronic configuration of it, it, it is 2, 8, 4. Now, can you imagine removing these four electrons in order to uh, go for uh, bonding with other compound? Or can you imagine gain of four electrons? Both of this task is very hard and it won't take place. So instead of that, they share the electrons with other uh, compounds, with hydrogen, with other certain compounds, right? So this process wherein sharing of electrons takes place in order to fill the valence electron or form octate is the golden bond. Okay, so we'll see about how it happens and what is happening in this. In the case of carbon, it has four electrons in its outermost shell and needs to gain four electrons uh, or gain or lose four electrons to attain noble gas configuration. Now, see, I told this, it is problematic, right? Why is it problematic? Let's have a look at it. If, now this is if cases, this uh, two points are comparatively important itself. So it would gain, if it would gain four electrons, forming C4 minus ion, it will be difficult for the nucleus with six protons to hold 10 electrons and that is four extra electrons. Now see, in the nucleus, that is six protons, right? And now if four more electrons are added, it will be 10 electrons in total. And that is going to be really hard for the nucleus to hold or the atom to hold. Like I told, it's not easy. It's not easy to add it. It does not have that much, um, you can call it power to hold it. Yeah. So instead of that, uh, this cannot be done and we follow sharing of electrons. Let's see if we try to lose electrons. It could lose four electrons forming C4 plus ion, but it would require a large amount of energy to remove four electrons leaving behind a carbon cation with six protons in its nuclei holding onto just two electrons. Now that is also a problem. In order to remove these four electrons, you will need a very much high energy. Now even if we try to remove it and it got removed, it will be just having six protons uh, in order to hold two electrons so it is hard so these are kind of the things which led to the formation or led to the study for the sharing of electrons okay uh, the next part is properties so properties of covalent bond whatever you study in ionic compounds or ionic bonding it's kind of exact opposite in covalent bond so compounds have low melting point and boiling point the force of attraction between molecules is not very strong. In a molecular force of attraction, sorry, ionic attraction, uh, the ionic bonding, you could see it's really strong bond. It requires high melting bonding point in order to break it, right? High energy is required. So bonding in these compounds does not give rise to any ions, okay? There's no ion, there's no role of ion in covalent bonding. And in fact, the entire organic chemistry, you just leave behind the ions, okay? So it's all about sharing of electrons which take place majority of the places it's the same thing sharing its valence electrons with some other atoms of same element or atoms of another element as a tool it shares with its own element like carbon carbon bonding can happen carbon hydrogen bonding carbon chlorine bonding we'll be seeing on further on we'll be seeing it on so this was the properties what is it uh, low melting and boiling point force of attraction is very weak and does not give rise to any ionic compound and sharing of valence electron with other atoms of the same element or other atoms of different elements. This is possible. Okay, so hopefully that it's clear. Now we're done with the properties of coal and bond. Let's move on to the next one, which is bonding of hydrogen. So like uh, we have bonding for carbon, um, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen. Like we have bonding for everything, right? This all are coal and bonds. 
okay there is sharing of electron which is taking place let's take what's the type of bond present in hydrogen at this point okay so what is the atomic number of hydrogen it's one hydrogen has one electron in its k shell and requires one more electron to fill the k shell obviously now its atomic number uh, is one right so electronic configuration will be it's k l m so it will be one we need one more for octate formation which is two right so the order is two eight eight and so on fine so hydrogen has one electron in k shell and requires one more electron in the k shell am i clear with this now now two hydrogen atoms share their electrons to form a molecule of hydrogen h2 each hydrogen atom to attain electronic configuration of nearest noble gas helium which has two electrons in its k shell so everything they're trying to share electrons. One hydrogen will have one of its electrons. You can see this in the demonstration, uh, which is shown. Hydrogen has one electron with it, and another hydrogen to form H2 molecule will give one of its um, electron to the other hydrogen to form a molecule by sharing it. So this is basically an example of covalent bond. Okay. So this is a bonding of hydrogen. So what happens is share one of its electrons from each of them so that they have a two um, electrons in its k-shell and it forms octate. It has more stable electronic configuration. Okay, so this was for the bonding of hydrogen. This is not much important, but just know it, right? Then bonding of oxygen. See, we had done the same thing in uh, metals and non-metals, wherein uh, we are, like, we have a compound and then we write the uh, Lewis structure of it, Na2O. We had done many examples of that. If you didn't see, just check it out. So bonding of oxygen, an, oxy an atom of oxygen has six electrons in its K-cell. The atomic number of oxygen is eight, and it requires two more electrons to complete a octet. So what is the uh, atomic number of oxygen? It is 16. So the electronic configuration will be two, eight, six. Now we just need two electrons for it to form an octet. Now you can see we have six electrons with oxygen, and we need two, right? So if we, uh, this, Two electrons, this two bond, double bond, act as two uh, two pair of electrons. Okay, so it'll be two pair, it'll be four electrons. And this act as a lone pair upon the oxygen, and this forms O2. Again, this is also sharing of electron, and hence it'll be covalent bonding. Yeah, just know it, like nothing much to take a bit hype and stuff, just leave it. Bonding in nitrogen, uh, nitrogen has atomic number seven. So seven means it's going to be two and um, five right yeah so here we need three electrons so it is forming triple bond in order to attain an octate each nitrogen atom in a molecule of nitrogen contributes three electrons giving rise to three shared pairs of electrons yeah so hydrogen was one ox uh, one bonding oxygen two this is three okay now let's see the structure of methane methane was CH4. This is the chemical formula of methane. Methane is widely used as a fuel and as a major component of biogas and compressed natural gas. We use it for cooking and stuff, right? Hydrogen has a as a valency of 1. Carbon has a tetravalent. Tetravalent means carbon's atomic number is 14. Electronic configuration 2, 8, 4. So it has 4 ele uh, valence electron and this cannot be removed. Neither can uh, anything be added, and hence we share it. This is core and bud uh, property, right? So therefore, we call carbon a tetravalent compound. In order to achieve noble gas com com uh, configuration, carbon shares these electrons with four atom of hydrogen. Okay. Now what happens is, uh, we have a carbon here. Okay. We have four hydrogens, and carbon needs four electrons to form stable electronic configuration. So we will put in four valence electrons and how much electrons or uh, how much electrons valence electron does a hydrogen have? Hydrogen's atomic number is one and therefore the valence electron is one. So we have one valence electron forming four bonds. In other way, we write it like this. In organic chemistry, this is how we denote it. Okay. This is the Lewis structure of it. The structure of it. Am I clear with this? Yeah? Okay.
okay so in short we explained this all thing we learned all these things to just clarify one thing that covalent bonding means sharing of electron sharing of electron takes place this is what covalent bonding means so such bonds which are formed by the sharing of an electron pair between two atoms are covalent bond okay cool okay now we have some questions here we have two questions here these are kind of the important questions that comes every year in cbse so let's just see it why does a covalent bond have less melting and boiling point now they will be like they will give a statement covalent bond has less melting and boiling point uh give reason this is what the question is going to be so covalently bonded molecules are seen to have stronger bonds within the molecule okay they have in the uh, the, the in the molecular force are strong their bonds are stronger it's hard to break it but then the in the molecular uh, forces are weak and due to which melting and boiling point are less melting and boiling point will increase when in the molecular force of attraction are stronger for that case okay so this was the first question that comes from this area covalent compounds are poor conductors of uh, electricity give reason now this was other type of questions that told right now uh, in covalent bond we don't deal with electrons itself so if there's no dealing of electrons uh, ions basically how do you expect electricity to come it isn't going to come since the electrons are shared between atoms and no charged particles are formed such covalent compounds are generally poor conductors of electricity okay no charged particle be formed there's nothing uh, which is dealing with charged particles here it's just about the atoms electrons it's about the bonding fine okay now allotropes of uh, carbon if you guys remember thing in 8th or 9th round we learned what is allotropes different form of the same element in this case it's carbon we have graphite uh, this is given in yellow box in your book so just don't ignore any of these stuffs cuz these are important so graphite diamond and buckminster fullerene uh, the name is fullerene okay so let's see uh, about them so in graphite each carbon atom is bonded to three other carbon atoms in the same plane giving a hexagonal array one of these bonds is a double bond and thus the valency of carbon is satisfied graphite structure is formed by hexagonal arrays being placed in layers one above the other graphite is also a very good conductor of electricity now this is an exception carbon in general it is a covalent bond um, material right and graphite is an allotrope of it right so it is also supposed to be having less conduction of electricity but this is an exception here graphite is a good conductor of electricity so graphite as you can see here it it forms a hexagonal array and it's it's having double bond in one of its bond if it is double bond it forms a hexagonal array each carbon atom is bonded to three other carbon atoms okay so three other carbon atom each carbon is bonded to three other carbon atoms and a uh, double bond is formed it forms it's like a layer so that the first layer you can see it here the first layer is here and the second layer here so that is what it means diamond and diamond each carbon atom is bonded to four other carbon atoms in here it was three carbon atoms here it, and diamond it's four carbon atoms forming a rigid three dimensional structure diamond is hard substance known while graphite is smooth and slippery uh, it was supposed to come here but okay so graphite is smooth and slippery or uh, like your pencil use it is graphite diamond the jewelry is it doesn't break fast um and it's hard substance is used for cutting uh, the hard rock sort of things and stuff so diamonds can be synthesized by subjecting pure carbon uh, to a very high temperature uh, pressure and temperature okay so it can be formed it can be synthesized in lab so diamond uh, you can see this this is the structure of diamond it's a 3d structure with four uh, carbon, one carbon atom attaching to four now the last one is c60 uh, buckminster fullerene or fullerene you can see c60 which has carbon atoms arranged the form of football so this is in the same of football uh, since this look like the geodesic domain designed by us architecture buckminster fuller the name a molecular name for so this just, just leave it but then remember uh, this can come in one more questions which is a, a drop of carbon 
which is arranged in the form of football. Bagman is the full arrange. So you are then I think. Yeah, so this is allotropes. Uh, graphite, it's bonded to three carbon atoms, one carbon. It's a good conductor, it's slippery and uh, smooth. Diamond, it's a harder substance, four dimensional uh, 3D structure. It can be synthesized by a very high temperature. Okay. And buckminsterphalene, it's a shape of football. Okay. Now we're going on to the next part of the chapter, which is versatile nature of carbon. Why do we have this category? Like, why is it um, having a very different sort of um, capability? We have three points catenation, small size of carbon, and tetrabalancing. So tetrabalancing, you guys know it. What is it? Sharing of four balance electrons with other carbon atoms or other elements also of other atoms. Okay, so tetravalency, we are confined, we are done with it. Catenation. Carbon has a unique ability to form bonds with other atoms of carbon, giving rise to long carbons, uh, large molecules, and this process is called catenation. Long chains of carbon, branch chains of carbon, or even carbon atoms arranged in rings. So the ones which are arranged in drink, the long atoms, the ability of carbon to form long chains or uh, long rings are called catenation. Okay, this property is known as catenation. Another category, uh, another property on which why it is versatile in nature, it is more reactive in nature, is because of its small size. This enables the nucleus to hold on to the pair electrons strongly. The bonds formed by elements having bigger atoms are weaker. And since the bond is exceptionally strong, they are stable. Okay, because of the small size of carbon, it's more stable, and the bonds uh, formed by elements have bigger atoms and are much weaker. Fine. So these were the three properties. What is so? What is the first one? Catenation. What is its nature? Forming large fo compounds, forming large chains, rings, stuff. Okay. Now we're done with carbon. In silicon, we have a point here. I missed it out. Silicon forms compounds with hydrogen, which have uh, chains up to seven or eight atoms. But these compounds are very reactive. Only carbon has a proper reactive or reaction, or they are more reactive in nature. Only they are properly reacted. Okay. Now we're getting on to organic part, the nomenclature, the hardest part of chemistry. If you learn it properly, it's super easy or else it will be a bit hard because this is continuing till grade 12. So better and good, you guys said it now itself. So compounds uh, which are single bond, which is having single bond like C, C, this one is saturated compound. Okay, single bond, saturated compound. Now the one which is having double bond, which is like this or like this, it's unsaturated compounds. Okay, fine. So single bond, saturated, double or triple bond, unsaturated. And that's it, we don't have more bond formations. Okay, so now let's see the formation of ethane. Now, since here onwards, we'll be going on to the formation, we'll be writing chemical formulas, the chains. So we'll be drawing all those things. So let's see how um, methane is formed. Okay, so methane, uh, sorry, ethane. Right. In ethane, we have two carbon atoms. We will be further learning all the names of the uh, compound on how much carbon we have. Accordingly, we name it. So that's what the nomenclature deals with. For now, just think this. Ethane has two carbon atoms. So, two carbon atoms. Now, let's put a bond between them. Carbon needs to fulfill four bonds. In that one of the bond for each of them is fulfilled. Now we need three for each of the carbon in order to full, uh, fulfill its balanced electron, right? It has to be uh, three hydrogens and three hydrogens in either one of the carbon. So this is how it will be filled. So hydrogen, hydrogen, okay. So it's basically like CH2, CH2. This is a smaller format and this is a structural format of it, of the equation, of the thing. And this is a structure of it. Okay, this is how the Lewis structure, dot structure is represented by the electrons in the notion. It's basically one pair of bond on each of them. And this is the, this is how we write it. 
okay and exam furthermore you guys will be learning uh, equations on this then many things De dealing with organic chemistry have a ton to study further okay so we'll see that then for now let's just think that and continue further so in a compound it can be of two types right as i told earlier saturated means single bond unsaturated double and triple bond okay now under saturated compounds we have alkene alkene and unsaturated compound we have alkene and alkyne now what is the difference between these alkene is just one single bond okay alkene two single bond uh, two bond double bond basically alkyne triple bond this is the difference between each of them and each of them has its own structural format it has its own name we'll be dealing with those things okay right so now uh, we will learn see in your book it, i think it's given an opposite or uh, a bit changed order but i'm this is how i'll be teaching we'll go through the nomenclature now so that i can teach you further better way yeah so these are the rules in order to write the nomenclature of carbon compounds identify the number of carbon atoms in the compound a compound have three carbon atoms which would uh, which would have a name of propane okay uh see propane now the naming thing we will look on it for now just think uh, understand if it is three we call it prop okay with ane why is it ane because it's alkene it's basically. okay so in the case of functional group is present it is indicated uh, in the name of the compound with either a prefix or suffix in the name of functional group is to be given a okay what is a functional group it's basically like uh, we replace hydrogen from the compound we'll be learning further with that uh, nomenclature for that is also there it's a bit different to this okay so that we'll discuss at that point when we study that uh, prefix suffix prefix before the name suffix end of the name right if the uh, if the name of the functional group is to be given as a suffix and the suffix of functional group begins with a vowel and the name of the carbon chain is modified by deleting the e and adding the prop proper function so this is dealing with the functional group so at that time i'll uh, teach you guys if the carbon at a uh, chain is unsaturated then the final ane in the name of the carbon chain is substituted by ene or ine or this is important for example a three carbon chain with a double bond would be called propene and if it's three a triple double bond it's called propyl so basically what happens is according to the number of carbon atoms according to the bond present it, uh, in it we change the name of it okay let's move on okay so this is the first kind of um and saturated uh, compound which i told this is the first type alkenes alkenes has single bond anything which is ending with alkene you write the name of it along with ane okay so if the uh, the naming goes like this the first one is meth okay meth second one is eth third one prop fourth one but fifth one pent sixth one hex and then the uh, math numerological uh, the things the name which we give there the same thing follows up after from fifth one onwards it's the same thing as max so it's fine so the first four is meth eth prop but remember this at this point itself the first one is meth second one is eth third one is prop fourth one is but with those all we just add in to the end of it so meth uh before that the chemical like the formula the basic formula for finding alkenes is this cnh2n plus 2 so what is this if the number of carbon atom present is 1 so it's c1 h2 into 1 is 2 2 plus 2 is 4 so it's ch4 which is basically methane okay get it so it's meth plus in similarly when there's two carbon atoms it would be c2 h2 times 2 is 4 plus 2 is 6 so it's going to be c2 h6 and it's going to be ethane and this is the structure how we write it we write carbon since it's just one and then four hydrogen atoms we have two carbon with three we, we have to fill in its balance shell filling uh, its balance shell with how much of a hydrogen is required for propane the next one is prop because it's three number so it's going to be three carbon with eight uh, hydrogen 
so accordingly it will be 8 then butane we have 4 it's going to be 10 pent we have 5 so it's going to be 12 hex 6 14 so this is alkane group everything towards the end we add in fine okay now this is a skeletal structure we can write the same thing in different format as well like this uh, by branching it towards the end and then further branching to hydrogen or we can make a ring structure also this is called hexagon since there are six so it's going to be hexagon cyclic or uh, hexane right that's how we name it okay so now let's move on to the next one which is alkenes wherein double bond will be formed now this is the formula for it let us try naming it okay okay so now guys uh, let's put in n as one okay it's going to be c h two times now did i say this it is double bond right now if it is double bond there should be two carbon and double bond will be formed between two carbons do you find two carbons here it's just one so guys understand keep there's no uh, compound has such methane okay there's no compound it won't form a compound because we need two carbon atoms for double bond and hence this formation is not there we start the formation by um, c2h4 this is how we start and we name it ethene okay so let me just change this i just took it from the previous um, page right okay so the number of carbon is two and the name is going to be ethene formula is c2h4 how will you write it c double bond c and h h why did you just put two hydrogen because we already have the double bond which is connected to carbon similarly h h okay now let's try the next one which is um, propene so it's going to be prop in and we have three uh, c3h6 you just put it in the formula then you get the answer uh, mcqs come so that's the reason why i gave you this equation i think ethene and alkane is uh, sorry alkene and alkane is there but alkyne formula is not there so i've provided that as well so c double bond c c now in this case we can only put it between one of the carbon bond right one of the pair of the bond the other one will be single bond so it's going to be h h one two three so we need one more h here and here we need three so this is how we name it okay now uh, can you guys comment in the comment box uh, what is the name of the next carbon compound the fourth carbon okay in alkene group so do let me know in the comments i'll reply to you guys okay now in double bond itself we have benzene this is a cyclic compound uh, which is a formula c6h6 we have an entire unit of benzene itself in grade 12 so this is just a base it's basically alternate double and single bond draw uh, know how to draw this structure so in basically we just draw it like this a hexagon this is how we show it benzene or this way is also fine and this is the structure of it uh, alternate a uh, double and single bond with H along with that and the formula is C6H6 remember it that that's only thing that is required okay so we're done with that and alkyl triple bond and this is a chemical formula CnH2n minus 2 here also we wouldn't start with one carbon atom again the same reason we need two carbon atoms between that also we can put triple bond so it starts with ethane so let's just remove this the first one is going to be ethane and the formula is c2 um h2 into 2 is uh, 4 4 minus 2 is 2 so it's going to be with okay so this is ethane let's try propyne it's going to be c3 uh, H2 into 3 is 6, 6 minus 2 is 4. So it's going to be this. Right? We need one H here. Now, in this case, we don't need any H itself in the middle carbon because we already have three bond, uh, four bond to it. So we don't name it and we directly do this. Okay? So this was propyl. Try naming other compounds so you get a proper practice on that. 
Okay, now we are heading on to the next part, which is functional groups, the naming and stuff. Okay. Um, this is the functional groups. We have chlorine, bromine, this is a halo, alkanes, uh, and the formula is like this. C L B R and so on. Oxygen, alcohol, this is the formula, aldehyde, which is C H O basically, uh, with a double bond on oxygen and one single bond, ketone. This is all functional groups, you're supposed to remember it. Because we would need it in uh, naming it, right? And C double bond O carboxylic acid, it is basically C O O H. Compounds the element replacing hydrogen atom is referred to as hetero uh, hetero atom. Okay, so when we replace a uh, hydrogen from its compound, like alkane, 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 uh, all these three cases, we have hydrogen in place, right? Instead of that, we substituted by functional group. Okay, so that is our functional groups. We have chlorine, bromine, alcohol, aldehyde, ketone, and carboxylic acid. Compounds, uh, the elements replacing hydrogen atom is referred to as heteroatom, the same thing. These heteroatoms and the group containing the comfort specific properties to the compound, regardless of the length and nature of the carbon chain, and hence, this are called functional groups. So it's basically replacing of the hydrogen from its compound. Okay, now in that area, nothing much important is that you can skip it as fast as possible. Just know it. But functional group, it is important for nomenclature and furthermore also. Homologous series, series of compounds in which same functional group substitutes for hydrogen in a carbon chain is called homologous series. Okay, melting and bonding point increases with increase in molecular mass. This is for reasoning question uh, for many of the reasoning type questions. So the answer for that. Right, so series of compounds in which uh, same formula is can function group is used, it's called homologous series. Okay, now we'll try naming it, we'll learn the nomenclature, right? So now let's check it how to uh, write the nomenclature for the function group. The first one is haloalkane. So in this case, we put the prefix as chlorine, chloro, bromo. If it is chlorine, we put it as chloro, if it is bromine, we put it as bromo. So let me just write it down. Uh, for example, if we have a carbon atom of three, uh, a compound of three carbon atoms, this is how it's going to look like. With a chlorine atom attached along with hydrogen in order to fill the balance bond. So this will be named as chloro, the suffix, uh, sorry, the prefix plus propyl. Because we have three carbon atom and there's no double and triple one present among them. Right. The next one is bromo. So similarly, the same thing, if I change this to BR, it will be bromo propyl. Okay. Um, now next one is alcohol. Let's see how to name it. For alcohol, towards the end, we add suffix ON. Right? So if it is propyl, we'll add it propanol. This is how we say we put an all towards the end of it. So it's going to be like this. CH3, CH2, CH2, OH. How do we name this? Propanol. Okay? Because an alcohol is present. Aldehyde. Aldehyde for alcohol, if, we, if it was OL, for aldehyde it's going to be AL. Same thing. We write it CH3, CH2. Now, uh, towards the end, it's going to be CHO. Directly CHO because we are fulfilling it with double bond and oxygen. So, don't confuse yourself with that. We do consider the one which is in aldehyde as well as the number of carbon we count. So, it's going to be propanol. Okay. Now, ketone. For ketone, we put uh, towards the end again suffix as 1. Okay like on that's how we sound it on uh, for propanol this is a structure now for propanol again we need three carbon atoms the minimum thing for propanol or ketone group is three carbon atoms then only because ketone always comes in between two of two carbon atoms so carbon which is present between two carbon atoms that's why ketone group is present so it will come as propanol propanol Carboxylic acid towards the end will find COOH 
and that will be propanoic acid. Okay, now alkenes, what was it? Propene, alkynes, propyne. This is it. Nomenclature at the first, it will be hard. Okay, I'll put up an extra lecture um, again later on uh, for nomenclature alone. Do check it out. I'll put many examples and it will be proper clear for you guys. So guys, we're done with the first part of the chapter and we'll be doing the second part in a later course of time. I'll be uploading it as soon as possible. So if you like my video, do subscribe to my channel, hit the like button and comment if you have anything to tell me guys. And if you have any doubt, do tell me, I'll answer them uh, when I get time, yeah. So thank you and bye-bye. Oh, by the way, the notes will be there in the description, so check them out and learn from it. Try your best to learn it the day it has been thought itself, so it's far easier. So thank you and bye-bye, see you in my next lecture.